being independent. Get a bit Beyonce about it and think about how you want your future to look like. That's where the power is, asking yourself the questions so that you can set up the goals. Because if you're not asking yourself the questions, you're just busy watching Netflix and scrolling through Facebook, right? I'm Laura Higgins from ASIC, and today we have with us Faustina Agoli, and she's here to talk to us about her money story. Tell me about your relationship with money, when you first kind of became aware of it, when it was a thing for you. I was first aware of money pretty early on because I'm, I'm part Chinese, my mum's Chinese-Malaysian. So every Chinese New Year, we're given a thing called an ang bao. You may have noticed like red packets being flo floating around during Chinese New Year, and I would get money from my grandparents and my mum and just anybody who was an elder. So I learned a saying of Kung si fa chai, bang na lai, which means Happy New Year, give me my red packet please. <laughs> but when I was the legal age to work in a, a regular job, 14 years and nine months, I worked at McDonald's. And then um, I worked on a national television show, Video Hits, so I was working for Channel 10 and earning a salary. I had very clear goals then. And then life happened. Got involved into some really bad relationships and um, it made me make a decision that was financially bad. Which I, I bought a house with this person and I didn't, I was still figuring my life out. After that I entered into a relationship with somebody um, that was quite abusive. Um, emotionally, verbally, and that messed me up for years. And so back then, when I was super vulnerable, when I was down and out, spending thousands on therapy for my mental health, I did not really care for doing my taxes or, or getting on top of my expenses because looking at my expenses meant, meant that I had to look at my habits around my emotional craziness of wanting to just buy stuff to make myself feel good. and. I, once I faced that reality and realised, oh, I don't need to buy that toy flamingo to make myself laugh, that's when I got really clear on some of my outcomes. But I think I had to go through that journey of dealing with uh, what has happened from coming out, which is being comfortable in my own skin, and actually have like goals. And I think that's the issue with with a lot of us with money is that if we don't have clear goals to work towards, we're not going to be making clear decisions about our day-to-day -day finances and um, how we save. So your younger self, yeah. what advice would you give her? The advice that I'd give my younger self is always listen to my inner wisdom and myself because when I, once I got into my later teenage years and early 20s, I allowed everybody else to kind of inform who I was or what decisions I should make in my life. And that's when everything went a bit haywire. So it's always listening to that my gut instinct and my inner wisdom. Yeah. We know that it's really important for parents to talk to their kids about money. Mm -hmm. And so did your mum have some money advice for you? She always is a person that leads by action. So to be a single mum raising two kids, uh, at one point working three jobs at a time and has been a nurse her whole life, uh, to now a woman with four properties, I would say anything is possible. You know what I mean? When you set your mind to something, anything is possible. Like this is the migrant's dream of coming to Australia. I think if you, know, you back it up with hard work and a very clear vision, you will get there. So do you have any ideas about how we might engage young women in thinking about their super and planning for the future? Okay, I have a few ideas. I think it's really hyper important that we're not just thinking about ourselves in this moment. Yes, it's important to be present, but we also do need to think about setting ourselves up for the future. So having goals, and that, those goals also include having superannuation. I think it is super important to make sure that anybody that employs you, they're paying your super. But you can also be in a tricky situation where companies might go, not paying you super on the DL. But you can always go to the ATO, because I did once with a company, and I filled out this questionnaire, and I got a sizable amount of money for superannuation. And that was because I had a really good accountant, the one that I'm with now. And also just being independent about it. Get a bit Beyonce about it, and think about how you want your future to look like. 
because that's what Beyonce does. And then, you know, empower yourself with the knowledge because the knowledge is out there. It's only a Google search away. So it's been great chatting with you today. Thanks so for your great. time. Thank you for your time. This has been fun. I've really loved you asking me these questions because it's allowed me to be super clear about where I need to go. And I think that that's where the power is. Asking yourself the questions so that you can set up the goals. Because if you're not asking yourself the questions, you're just busy watching Netflix and scrolling through Facebook, right? Absolutely. Money smart therapy. Yeah, that's where we've been at. Great chat. Yes. <laughs>